Some comic book movies aren't for the faint of heart. You took your chances like we all did and you lost. You have any idea how easy I kill little snots like you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest comic book movies. What brings you here? Don't imagine it's the pussy. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at comic book inspired films that were overwhelmingly dark. And by dark, we mean a mix of adult content, with an emphasis on violence and gloomy atmosphere. The movies aren't judged so much on their quality, but their adherence to more sinister themes. Comic books and graphic novels are eligible sources, but manga is not, because there's enough of those to make a separate list. <laughs> Number 10, Dread. Give her one day in the field, supervised. See if she makes the grade. Sink or swim. Chuck her in the deep end. It's all a deep end. Perhaps the most brutal comic book movie to come out in the 21st century, Dread is the adaptation of the comic book character we'd all been waiting for. Since the 1995 version failed so miserably, comic fans were aching for a worthy Judge Dread movie, especially one that didn't pull any punches. And boy, did this one deliver. What are you doing? You know what I said? I'll kill the bitch! Yeah, I heard you hot shot. What? I said, hot shot. Dread is pretty much a 95 minute bloodbath, filled with ultra violence, ultra drug use, ultra sex, ultra everything. Fire! Also, with remarkably stoic acting, and a setting straight out of Blade Runner, it rejects the stereotype of the one dimensional action movie. In fact, Dread may be one of the most complete action films of the decade. Number nine, a history of violence. Sorry, do you think we know each other? You tell me. A history of violence is quite unconventional for a comic book movie. There are no superheroes, no monsters, and no melodrama. The protagonist is simply a small town diner owner, and his life is anything but exciting. But when his diner gets threatened, things turn dark immediately. <laughs> Starring Viggo Mortensen, and based on the graphic novel by John Wagner, a history of violence lives up to its name with brutal violence, graphic scenes of sex that are kinda rapey, and psychological turmoil. You didn't grow up in Portland. And you never talk about your adopted parents because you don't have any. However, this is all presented in such a sober way that you almost feel like you're watching your own family suffer from the same tribulations. And we've got David Cronenberg's directing to thank, as it leaves no room for comic relief and still earned loads of critical acclaim. You got anything to say before I blow your brains out, you miserable prick? I should have killed you, Macinfelli. Number eight, Constantine. Ah! Alan Moore first conceived John Constantine, the Demon Hunter, in 1985. After appearing periodically in Moore's Swamp Thing comics, Constantine received his own series called Hellblazer in the late 80s, produced by DC. Should have minded your own business, exorcist. <laughs> the character proved popular, and in 2005, a movie was made chronicling his otherworldly adventures. With Keanu Reeves as Constantine, the film takes us to hell and back, as Earth's most cynical protector fights all types of demonic phenomena. You can't cheat it this time. You're going back to hell. True, but you're not. Constantine delivers a macabre examination of life and the afterlife, with some even considering its depictions of hell and Satan as cinema's very best. <laughs> Number seven, 30 Days of Night. <laughs> 30 Days of Night was actually pitched as a film first, but several rejections sent the idea into development purgatory. With no other options, creator Steve Niles issued a comic miniseries as a vessel for the story, one in which vampires terrorize an Alaskan town during the period in which it experiences a 30-day polar night. The three-issue series succeeded in attracting attention from producers, and the coveted property finally became a film in 2007. 30 Days of Night is about darkness, 
and the exploitation of said darkness by a legion of ancient vampires. They invade the isolated town under the protection of night, and the resulting carnage is so great that this list would be incomplete without it. And it's not such a bad movie either. Somebody! Number six, Punisher Warzone. The first Punisher film was an R-rated action romp, very dark in its own right, especially for a Marvel-owned superhero. Punisher Warzone, however, is a much darker entity, and this has everything to do with the villain Jigsaw. Though Punisher himself is a vicious and brooding character, the antagonist, Jigsaw, no relation to the Saw character, is born from nightmares. He's a horribly disfigured psychopathic killer who strikes fear into viewers. He antagonizes Punisher throughout the film, and their ruthless back and forth brings meaning to their hostile relationship. You got one round left in there. You shoot one of these two, I'll let the other one go free. What do you say, Frank? Who's it to be, your fat friend right here? Or that nice little piece of jail bait over there? Burning hell. Number five, The Dark Knight. Don't let me find you out here again. We're trying to help you. I don't need help. Not my diagnosis. When Batman Begins premiered in 2005, superhero movies were changed forever. One-dimensional characters, kid-oriented themes, and corny, campy dialogue would no longer be the standard for the genre. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? You want to know how I got them? Batman was dark, and the public loved it. So much so that the sequel upped the ante and gave us the darkest mainstream superhero movie of all time. Up until that point, at least. What do you believe in? I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you... Stranger. The Dark Knight had murder, torture, gore, the deaths of principal characters, and a terrifying antagonist that signified a new generation of film villains. The Dark Knight paved the way for a darker Captain America, a darker Iron Man, and darker X-Men. Plus, the first hugely successful R-rated superhero movie, Deadpool. Leave the book in her general direction again, and you will learn in the worst of ways that I have some hard spots, too. That came out wrong. Number four, Spawn. What is your answer? Spawn was created by a maverick artist from a maverick comic book company, so it's not surprising that its movie adaptation is far from traditional. Oh, come on, you scream like a girl. Do it like this. The character was the brainchild of Todd McFarlane and the Image Comics label, and its 1992 debut became one of the highest selling independent comic books ever. Predictably, film rights were quickly obtained, and Spawn premiered five years later. It's a little early for Halloween, Simmons. Where you're going, every day's Halloween. Following the eponymous character, a demon resurrected anti-hero with occult powers, the film is riddled with frightening imagery, disturbing characters, and an overriding paranormal theme. It doesn't hurt that the main villain is a clown demon named Violator. His inclusion alone basically ensures Spawn's place on this list. Number three, Watchmen. Oh, the times they are Most dark comic books can be traced back to Alan Moore, who conquered a milquetoast land and left a settlement of mature readers in his wake. Most people say this started with Watchmen, which Moore wrote and David Gibbons illustrated. What do you seem to understand? I'm not locked in here with you. <laughs> You're locked in here with me! This limited comic book series showed a grim existence where superheroes are illegal. Once the film industry caught up with the darker trending comics, a Watchmen adaptation was kind of inevitable. Under the direction of Zack Snyder, the Watchmen film exhibits all the dark subject matter of the source material, complete with torture and attempted rape. While its quality might not completely match that of the comics, there's no question that its content does. It wouldn't be the first time Snyder attempted a dark adaptation of a comic series either. The director gave Frank Miller's 300 the big screen treatment three years earlier. My arm! It's not yours anymore. Number two, Sin City. Ask yourself if that corpse of a slug is worth dying for. 
Worth dying for. Worth killing for. Speaking of Frank Miller, he is another comic book writer known for his dark work, and Sin City is arguably his finest accomplishment. A modern neo-noir masterpiece, the Sin City comics were adapted into a film in 2005, which Miller co-directed with Robert Rodriguez. The film captured the style of the comics phenomenally, a mostly black and white action revenge thriller with an ensemble cast of violent characters. It's got you smoking there, bud. You shut the hell up, Jackie boy. Also, the film used the same color contrasting that was pioneered in the comics, which added selective coloring to the mostly dark backdrop. The success of the film enabled a long-awaited sequel, and though A Dame to Kill For was lacking the same quality as the first film, it still retained much of its darker style. Leva. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. My Number one, The Crow. You're him, huh? The Avenger. The killer of killers. Nice outfit. I'm not sure about the face, though. Based on the comic series by James O'Barr, The Crow is a comic book movie cut with a jagged edge. With an undead crow-resurrected protagonist and an intense revenge story, The Crow is darkness personified. Nothing about this neo-noir flick is joyful. Anguish pervades the entirety of the film and controls every second of footage. This is further accentuated when one is made aware of the accidental on-set death of actor Brandon Lee, who portrayed the main character, Eric Draven, a tragedy that added real despair to the clouded work of fiction. Suddenly, I heard a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. In both story and legacy, the Crow really put the morbid into comic book adaptations, and that's why it nabbed this spot on our list. A building gets torched. All that is left is ashes. I used to think that was true about everything. Families, friends, feelings. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite dark comic book movie? Just look at the heads on the wall. The heads on the wall. The heads on the wall. For more sinister top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.